Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This video will be part 2 of Kitsune Rook. All credit goes to the author, Helgi, for their amazing story. Make sure to read the whole story by clicking the link tree link in the description, then clicking on the name of this story. This part will be chapter 2 to 3 of the story. Also don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe. Now let's get into this amazing story. So. As usual, peace reigned in the town of Kuo. Whether that fact could be attributed to it being clearly claimed territory belonging directly to the Maoan Lees from the Yokai faction, the region being directly and actively governed by the younger sisters of two of those Mao, or the simple fact that Kuo was simply a peaceful and friendly town naturally, didn't matter. What did matter was that despite all its peacefulness and seemingly quiet morning atmosphere, the occult research club room had fallen into utter chaos. Naruto cackled as he dove over the couch to avoid the swing of a frosting, covered Kaneko hot on his heels. On the other side of the room, the rest of the club laughed alongside him, having lost their sense of decency when Naruto had nailed her on the forehead with a congratulations cupcake for both her and Kiba's promotion to mid-class. With Kaneko tossing the couch out of the way like it weighed nothing, the smaller girl bore down on her fellow rook only to be surprised by his counterattack and pinned in a tight hug while he rubbed his cheek against her own. Oh, Chibi. You are just too cute when you get all flustered like that, you know? If anything, the sudden sweet tone and hug made Kaneko even angrier. However, Naruto's nickname for her sent her over the edge. She was none too happy with the fact that somehow within the last three years Naruto had exploded in size, becoming the largest in the peerage while she remained by far the smallest. It wasn't fair. When he initially joined them, Naruto had been the same size and age as she was. Now he was almost as tall as Kiba, and far more physically imposing than the thin knight. Ah, uh, mercy! Naruto yelped as she pinched him on the soft underside of his arms. They had played at this same game for the last three years, so despite her disadvantage in size, Kaneko had picked up a few tricks to even the odds. With a huff, the small teen stepped away and cleaned herself up as the rest of the peerage slowly regained control over their laughter. Naruto just pouted at his friend with fake teary eyes as he rubbed his arms. So damn mean. Chibi, just trying to show you my love, he teased lightly, while the girl simply rolled her eyes though she did faintly smile. While this has been entertaining, I think it's time we move on. Congratulations, Kiba and Kaneko. You both make me so proud. Rias broke in to move the party slash meeting forward. She looked at her friends, much like a big sister, might when their younger sibling achieved something. Noticing the way Rias looked over her peerage, Naruto couldn't help but smile. While many devils use their peerages like tools or slaves, some even as nothing more than harems, Rias had instead made her peerage her family. Recently, Naruto had been thinking about that fact quite a lot. Sometimes he missed those back in Kanoha, but still, despite a part of him considering it selfish, he realized he had never been happier than when he was with Rias and the others. It was like he had always been looking for a home, and finally found it. Tuning back into the conversation Rias was having with the others, he suddenly paled at the last few words. I'm sorry, can you say that again, Rias? Kaneko and I have to follow who? Naruto said while groaning slightly along with Kaneko. Neither of them was fond of what their king was asking of them. I thought I was clear. You and Kaneko will be following Issei Hayuto and Aika Kiryu. I want you to follow Kiryu. She has a sizable magical reserve and may be a witch. We need to see if she has a coven nearby, and if she would be willing to be recruited. You have decent sensing abilities, even if they aren't at mine or Akino's level. You should be able to tell if she is part of a coven easily enough, Rias explained, though she had to fight to keep the smirk off her face. It was no secret that Aika Kiryu was essentially the female form of Issei Hayuto. Perhaps worse, as while Issei kept himself to peeping, Aika was far more forward, and since the start of the year, Aika had set her eyes on both Naruto and Kiba, rarely leaving the two boys alone during school hours. Aika had even helped their fangirl mobs a few times, and Naruto was pretty sure she had stolen at least one pair of his underwear last month. The hints she left whenever she cornered him in the hallway seemed to confirm that. But I, uh, Naruto began only for Rias to raise a thin eyebrow at him. No buts, Naruto. I need this done, and despite being a rook, you have the best stealth among our peerage. So it's up to you. I can't rely on anyone else for something so important, Rias said. A small pout on her face causing the poor blonde to fold instantly. What could he say? Rias had a special place in his heart, and it had nothing to do with her beauty and attractive way of convincing him. No, those just acted as the final nail in his metaphorical coffin. Of course, Rias, no problem, he said with a sigh, getting a round of giggles from his friends after he rolled over. 
except for Kaneko who was in practically the same boat as him. Now then, with that out of the way, let's get back to more fun topics, like a tournament of Tekken Tag or something. This got Kaneko to immediately perk up. The girl was a bit of a gaming addict, and she especially liked fighting games. Kibo was less interested but wasn't one to turn down a round of playing games with his friends. With that, the group went back into their party mood for the rest of the night. Naruto and Kaneko both wishing it lasted a bit longer as they dreaded beginning their new task the next day. It had been roughly a week since Naruto and Kaneko had begun stalking the two candidates for Rias Peerage. Despite the abnormal amounts of perversion, neither of the two seemed all that intriguing. Excluding, of course, the reasons that had led them to follow the pair to begin with. Naruto had easily found Aika's reserve of magic was noticeably stronger than any other humans in the area. While that could be written off as simply a higher chance for magic, hers was growing at a rate that only confirmed she was receiving training. It was no wonder Naruto hadn't noticed before Akino. The girl's magic had likely only begun being trained within the last year or two, so it was still small enough to be missed without greater skill at sensing. What had Naruto most intrigued, though, were the various scents that seemed to dwell around the girl. Several other people, and the scent that various magical elements gave off. Something few realized was that most supernaturals gifted with enhanced senses of smell could tell the slight difference between magically made elements and their naturally occurring counterparts. As it was, Ika definitely smelled of smoke from magically created fire. Not strongly, though, so it was unlikely that she was the one using the fire spell that caused it. Tonight, though, he could focus slightly on other things. Naruto and Kaneko had been called off their task to a meeting with the rest of the peerage to report their findings and to also deal with a stray that had come too close to Rhea's territory. That was why they were moving on an old, decrepit house in the poorer part of Kuo now. After Rias and Akino placed a barrier around the area to keep things secret, they made their move on the house. Kaneko smashed open the door, and Kiba and Naruto raced in to secure the front room, only to stop themselves and gag slightly at the smell of rotting corpses. How a stray devil could live here, wallowing in that scent? Naruto would never know. Part of him even concluded that for them to be so far gone as to enjoy that smell meant that death would likely be a mercy at the peerage's hands. Stray Devil Vele, formerly of the Algas Paimon peerage, surrender now and face the court of the Mao or be destroyed. Rias called out, though neither she nor the rest of her peerage expected Vele to do anything of the sort. Strays never did. Come and get me, princess. I'll enjoy playing with your corpses like all the others here. Vele replied from somewhere upstairs. Without a word, several clones of Naruto ran up the wall beside the stairs, avoiding any possible traps, and disappeared into the rooms. Seconds later, he grimaced and turned to explain what he had learned. Second door on the right, it's a bedroom with a big walk-in closet. He's some sort of snake monster and coiled up in there with a bunch more bodies. I think the best bet would be just burning him out honestly, the rook said. He loved a good fight, but they knew going in Vele had potent poison and acid abilities and hold up the way he was would make it hard for them to attack without just destroying the house. A barrier is already up, so might as well. Akino, I leave it to you, Rias commented as the group stepped back outside, and the queen giggled sadistically as she began prepping a powerful fire spell. Moments later, the house was engulfed, and a screeching snake-like demon was forced to split from his snake half and reform in his humanoid body to try and escape. Unfortunately for Vele, it was far from the group's first rodeo. Before he could even reach the barrier, Kiba was upon him slashing out his legs from underneath him and sending the rogue to the ground. Immediately after impact, though, Naruto was pinning him down, painfully wrenching his elbows back in a hold and forcing his face and deadly mouth into the dirt. Stray Devil Vele, on my name as Rias Grimmery, heiress to the House of Grimmery, I sentence you to death for acts against the underworld and your own king. Now die. With that, the red-headed king created a small orb of her power of destruction and pushed it into the devil while Naruto stood up. Vele had little chance to do more than scream once before he disintegrated. Well, that was a letdown. The guy was supposedly a mid-class like us. He barely put up a fight, Naruto commented with a frown. That's because we outplayed him. I doubt he expected anyone to burn the house down around him. He was known as Vele the Pit Viper for a reason. Every raiding game match he was in he was the defense for his peerage, and poisoned any attackers that crossed by whatever hole he was hiding in. Good call, by the way, Rias explained before praising her rook. Naruto had come a long way from the boy he was when he first joined their peerage. Naruto had been a bit of a driving force for the whole peerage to better themselves. He had practically pestered Serzex into assigning the members of his peerage to train on their own, 
and the results were obvious. All of them were mid-class. Akino and Naruto were easily on the upper end of mid-class too. Rias herself had grown quite a lot, and after approaching her mother for training in her power of destruction, she had become far better in its use. There was a reason the Bale family retained the most power in the underworld. Power of destruction remained the hands-down most powerful bloodline among devils. With her mother bringing the power into the Grimmery family and both Serzex and Rias gaining it, the Grimmery clan was quickly becoming one of the strongest as well. They had the rank of Lucifer with Serzex, after all, even if he couldn't technically show bias toward his original household, the prestige alone benefited the Grimmery. Beyond just physical growth, Naruto had arguably grown the most. While Rias' mother had taught him etiquette and proper manners as best she could, it was Zeoticus who had taken the boy under his wing when he noticed the same sort of battlefield genius that Serzex had at his age. Rias would occasionally tease her father about having gotten another son in the deal, much to the prim and proper Lord Zeoticus's annoyance. He would likely never admit how much he truly adored the blonde. It was obvious, though, that he held a special place with the man when he made sure to ask about him in the letters between him and his daughter. Let's finish destroying the house then head back. While it burns, Kaneko, Naruto, how goes your mission? Rias asked as she used her power to take out a few walls, making the house collapse on itself. Kiryu is definitely getting training from someone. I haven't been able to locate any coven, but she smells of someone's magic apart from her own. Specifically, fire magic of some kind. I'll need more time to find out more without risking revealing myself to any possible enemies. The pervert was approached by a fallen angel this afternoon. She asked him on a date this weekend. It's weird, Kaneko commented as she chucked a large stone from the overgrown garden into one of the still-standing beams of wood from the house. Rhea stopped for a moment and thought about that. A fallen angel in her territory and a possible coven, if not at least a witch and her apprentice, also nearby. That spelled all sorts of problems in the near future. She would need to switch things up. Kaneko had several contracts that needed to be fulfilled soon anyway. All right, there's a change of plans then. Naruto, I want you to tail Hayudu for this date with the Fallen while Kaneko completes her contracts. I plan on having my familiar slip him a contract somehow, but I want you there in case he is attacked before he accidentally summons me, Rias ordered as she sent a larger blast of her power to erase one of the piles of debris. Oh, well, what about Kiryu? He asked as he used a basic water jutsu to stop flames from spreading to the nearby grass. He had been doing his own training with the limited and very reluctant help of Kyuubi over the last three years as well. Kiba, you are free for the next few days, right? Akino asked with a pleasant smile and amused eyes as she melted down several pieces of metal from the house. The boy tried to hide his grimace, causing her eyes to light up slightly in humor. I suppose I am, Kiba replied. Perfect, good idea, Akino. Rias agreed, sharing a bit of the humor with Akino. Kiba was harassed by the girl much like Naruto, though the older boy honestly had more difficulty handling it as she had a tendency to run over his attempts to stall her advances. So, Kiba will be following Kiryu to try and identify her fellow coven members, and if possible, the location of the coven itself. Meanwhile, Naruto will be shadowing Hayudu to make sure he isn't harmed by the fallen angel and Kaneko will be completing her backlog of contracts. Oh, actually... I have a contract that came in that Akino would be better at fulfilling than I would. While I follow the perv, she could complete it with no issue, Naruto said with a smile, shooting a look to his fellow blonde who looked briefly confused before likewise smiling at what Naruto was doing. Excellent. Just have your familiar deliver it to hers later tonight or tomorrow, so she has time to prepare anything she might need, Rias replied, smirking slightly at the small, playful glare her queen shot at the two boys. Anyway, let's finish up here quickly. I have to make a report for this and finish up the rest of my paperwork for the week, she continued with a tired sigh. The peerage nodded as they set back to work, finishing the demolition of the house and once they were done, only a blank patch of upturned soil remained where the house once stood. Kiba let out a yawn as he followed after Aika in the busy streets of Kuo. It was getting somewhat late, and the night had been following the girl all day as she did errands. Practically nothing had happened out of the norm. Kiba was even beginning to grow suspicious that they had actually been wrong about her. His sensing abilities were not at the level of the other members of his peerage, but he wasn't a slouch either. It was in Kiba's nature to take his role as Rias's knight very seriously, and that meant honing all of his skills as best he could. That being said, to his senses, Aika seemed only slightly more powerful than a normal girl in magical reserves. Nothing truly special, though after seeing her clumsily walk into traffic after spotting a pair of athletes jogging by, he had to acknowledge she was more durable than was natural. 
He was inclined to chalk that up to a pervert's abilities, though, as the perverted trio at school seemed to receive severe beatings almost daily and be fine afterward. I'm starting to think this was a waste of time, he grumbled as he scowled over at the girl while she browsed men's workout magazines with drool coming from her mouth. Seriously, she has never seemed this bad in class, and she is terrible there. I didn't think it was possible that was her controlling her urges. Aika was, of course, a nice enough girl, and Kiba was pretty used to girls being forward with him based on his looks and outwardly gentle nature. That being said, Aika was beyond off-putting in how she reacted to himself, Naruto, and a few other boys at their school. A few girls too. Now that he thought about it, Rias and Akino had been her victims previously for her game of slipping beside them and grabbing a handful of either their chest or rear. Kiba couldn't figure out how both girls seemed to just laugh it off as if they thought she was really that clumsy. He knew better, and that they just thought it was humorous. The knight was pulled from his thoughts when he saw a strange woman with dark skin in a bright yellow business suit with a skirt walk up and strike up a conversation with Aika. He would have normally ignored it. Beyond being exotic due to her skin color and bright green eyes, the woman was not truly out of place. Sure, she was beautiful, but also old enough to be Kiba's mother. Not that that sort of age gap mattered much for devils. Either way, he very nearly wrote her off as their conversation focused entirely on the prices before them at the market stall. That was until he noticed Aika's odd behavior. She seemed to be trying hard to remain her normal self but it was easy to tell from someone who had repeatedly suffered from her determined perversion in the past that the girl was nervous around this woman, or more likely nervous to be in public with her. Kiba spread his senses out and nearly stumbled. The woman was definitely a witch. There was no denying it. Her magical power surpassed his own, which for a devil would not have been a great feat as he was a physical type of fighter, most of his magical reserves being used to give him sudden bursts of additional speed in combat. The issue was humans, even magically gifted ones, had to train a very long time to be on par with supernatural beings. This woman alone could have defeated the stray the peerage defeated recently, and Kiba had no doubt there were more of her kind in the coven. He needed to report back to Rias immediately. Stepping into a nearby alley, Kiba teleported away, catching both Aika and the woman's attention. Turning to the younger girl who began to shiver slightly at the glare shot her way from her companion, the elder woman violently grabbed Aika's wrist and led her away, causing her to grimace in pain as she tried to keep pace with the much longer-legged woman. Much like Kiba had initially been, Naruto was bored out of his mind while following Hayadu and the Fallen Angel. They had done normal couple things the entire time, and while his sensing was not as great as it would be if he actively used it giving himself away, he could tell the Fallen was gradually feeling more and more guilty about something. However, her guilt was greatly overshadowed by her greed, most likely to try and woo the pervert to her faction's side. As the sun had set and the couple had gradually wound down to simply strolling through a park, Naruto began to hope that the date was finally coming to an end. Then he could report that the Fallen was definitely trying to seduce Issei into joining her faction, and that would be that. At least that was his hope. Sadly, as with most things in his life, Naruto was disappointed. Instead of ending the date on a pleasant note, the Fallen Angel transformed to show her true form all while asking Issei to die for her. The poor perverted fool was frozen in place and would have been skewered if Naruto hadn't intervened by snatching the back of his shirt and flinging him to the far side of the fountain away from the murderous angel. Who the hell are you? The angel hissed at him while flexing her power to try and intimidate him. I am Naruto Uzumaki, Rook of Rias Grimmery's Peerage. You are in her territory, now who the hell are you? Naruto growled out while flexing his own power, overcoming hers and causing her to hesitate. Rainier. That's who now step out of the way, little devil, so I can eliminate this threat. The now named Rainair tried to bluff. She needed the rest of her group with her for this brat. He was clearly at least a mid class devil, and she had a single pair of wings. No, Naruto simply replied, and had she not been expecting him to see through her bluff, he would have had her in that single attack. Thoughts raced through Rainair's head as she forced the devil's attack back and attempted to gain some space from him. She recalled the devil's system easily enough. Typically rooks were slower-moving, hard-hitting morons. At least that was the stereotype among her fellow fallen. This rook, though, was extremely fast and hit just as hard as she imagined a rook would. She had put everything she had into blocking his strike, and still, her body ached from the effort while he simply slid into a stance to continue the fight. Summoning a light spear to try and begin her attacks, Rainair barely dodged the sudden attack from behind as an apparent twin of the blonde boy smashed a small crater into the concrete she had previously been standing on. 
The new arrival pivoted immediately into a kick and slammed a foot into Rainair's midsection, sending her skidding across the park and into a tree. Rainair barely had time to suck in a breath to replace the air he forced out of her with a single kick. Again, the second Naruto was upon her, this time swinging a punch for her face, one that she narrowly avoided, this time taking to the air to try and gain distance. Sadly for her, she had forgotten the original Naruto by this point, and his sudden aerial drop onto her back sent both slamming into the earth. Now with an arm hooked around one of his opponent's arms, trapping it against her body at an awkward angle, Naruto began pummeling her with repeated punches. However, her second arm remained free and able to produce a light spear that she stabbed into the boy with a vicious grin. Her brief moment of victory was cut short as he puffed into a cloud of smoke, and the second Naruto set about pummeling her much like the first had, managing to slip from his grasp by stabbing this one as well. The now bloodied and swelling angel retreated and scanned the area. Both of the blondes had proven to be some sort of fakes, and initially, Rainair had concluded some sort of sacred gear was at work, until she saw the true Naruto nearby with his tails, wings, and ears fully revealed alongside his fanged smirk. Surrender now, little bird. You are outmatched and alone. While I never am, whether it's with my clones or them, Naruto spoke with confidence, sure of his victory as several red magical circles formed, and the rest of Rhea's peerage stepped out to back up their friend, not that he needed it. I know when I have lost. Until next time, Uzumaki. Tell Hayadu we'll catch up later. With that parting statement, Rainair caused a bright flash of light that blinded and slightly burnt the members of the peerage while the fallen fled. Rainair had never been a combat type anyway, more for information gathering and espionage. Her speed, on the other hand, was impressive as she was gone in seconds, long before the effects of her stun attack had worn off. She escaped, Naruto growled, calming down as Rias patted him gently on the shoulder to show him it was fine. Don't worry, they always come back, you know? Next time we'll have her, she said with her usual smile that spread to her peerage members. Let's check on Hayudu. Naruto said as the group stepped over to where Issei still sat confused, terrified, and practically frozen in shock. Hey perv, wakey wakey, Naruto said to the boy with no effect. Let me try, Kaneko said in her flat tone. The Nekashu then proceeded to slap the pervert hard enough across the face to send him sprawling. Rias sent her a disapproving look while fighting back her slight grin while Naruto, Akino, and Kiba all chuckled at what she had done. Kaneko, there was no reason to be so harsh. We will need to talk about where you are picking up such violent tendencies later, the redhead joked slightly before turning to face the now blinking Issei. Issei, are you with us now? At the boy's nod, she continued on. Wonderful, now Issei, I need you to listen closely, all right? You just witnessed, and were nearly a victim of what is called a fallen angel. Don't worry, I can better explain things for you at school tomorrow, so I will send someone to pick you up from class in the afternoon. For now, Akino will take you home to rest for the night, since it doesn't look like you are hurt with anything beyond minor bruises. We will just collect you tomorrow and talk about what's happening, okay? Until then, everything you saw remains between us. As she spoke, Rias began to slow down her speech and enunciate more as if talking to a child, which most would find likely to be insulting if they didn't see the boy seem to be stuck looking at a slight bounce of her chest as she explained things. It would be shocking if he remembered half of what she was telling him. Akino disappeared with the boy as the rest of the peerage likewise teleported back to the clubhouse. There were a few reports they needed to give Rias, and Rias had more dreaded paperwork to push through to her father and brother's offices. The next day, back at school, Issei had been noticeably more reclusive than was usual for him. His two best friends weren't the only ones to notice either, with several other classmates kicking the rumor mill into overdrive over what might have happened. Rias and her peerage had noticed as well, and rather than waiting till the end of the school day, it was decided that they would bring him to the clubroom over the lunch break. Issei wasn't the only one acting slightly different, though. Naruto had noticed his own observation target had seemed distracted today. She also smelled odd, though the scent was not something he recognized, so he had no clue what the issue was. Sadly, he didn't have time to properly investigate during the day with him needing to be present when Issei was offered a position in the peerage. Still, he made a mental note to keep an even closer eye on Ika's strange behavior. Walking with Kaneko to the clubroom, Naruto couldn't help the small smile at the outbreak of chaos, started from Kiba retrieving Issei for Rias. The school was buzzing with rumors, just like it had earlier in the morning at Issei's odd behavior, only now they seemed to focus around the fact that Kiba had made the poorest word choice possible when collecting Hayudu. 
Naruto expected he would have known better than fangirls who would overinflate the word, Issei I need you, with something perverse. The girls were nearly as bad as the perverted trio sometimes. Not that funny, a voice said next to him, causing Naruto to turn and face Kaneko. Are you sure? Come on, Kaneko, you know you cracked a bit of a smile too when you first heard that Yudo and Hayadu were planning to elope together today because Hayadu's parents wouldn't accept him coming out of the closet, Naruto said while trying not to laugh too loudly. They say the same things about you and Kiba too, she countered, getting his smile to drop slightly. It annoyed him that she wasn't wrong. Oh, like they don't say the same for you and me too, Naruto answered, leaning close and getting an extremely faint, almost unnoticeable blush from the girl before she punched his shoulder with greater than average power. For his part, Naruto laughed it off while rubbing his arm. It hurt, but Kaneko didn't put even close to her full power behind it, and Naruto was far more durable than a human. Finally coming to the clubhouse, the pair of first years made their way to the clubroom and sat down on the couch beside one another, taking time to enjoy the somewhat dimmer lighting. While the sun didn't damage them, it still proved an annoyance for them as devils. Here, though, the clubroom was dimmed enough that they could properly relax. Coming from the kitchenette attached to the clubroom, Akino entered with her usual sweet, sisterly smile as she laid a tray of baked goods down for her juniors. The older girl slipped between one of the most sadistic women Naruto had met and arguably the most sweet and gentle girl he knew. Though he had to remain on guard around her lately after getting her placed on the assignment originally meant for Kiba while Kiba was watching Aika. She would get him and Kiba both back for it. He just wasn't sure how yet. The trio made small talk for a time. Akino had been out of class on request from Rias to take care of a few things to ensure if Issei joined the peerage everything would transition smoothly. Since she had missed most of the day already, Naruto and Kaneko filled her in on the teasing material she now had on both Kiba and Issei when they arrived. A little part of him hoped that would be enough to ward her off from a revenge prank. After all, the mission, while one of the most disliked, was really small potatoes all things considered. After a time, Rias entered, having clearly just gotten out of the shower and dressed, though Naruto was a bit surprised she hadn't purposefully waited for Hayadu to arrive. Showing off her body in a towel would likely have been a good recruitment tool for someone like Issei. Not that Naruto was going to complain. He didn't outright hate the boy, but his unresolved issues with Jiraiya, who was as much of a pervert as Issei, as well as his close bonds with the members of the ORC, left the idea of Issei perving on any of the girls something that left him annoyed. Kiba will be here with Issei shortly, so let's talk for a second about what exactly we are going to say to him, Rias began, gaining her subordinate's attention. Issei doesn't initially appear to be that valuable of a piece, but we all know how misleading appearances can be. Kaneko can tear a building apart with her bare hands and weighs less than 80 pounds. So I want each of you to treat him with respect expected for a comrade. The group nodded, though Kaneko seemed to hold a bit of a pout at the thought of Issei being one of them. The group didn't wait much longer before the two boys entered the room, and Issei went through his normal perverted meltdown over the sight of the three girls. Naruto had to fight to keep from rolling his eyes as the two older girls simply giggled at his behavior. He had thought the boy would be more serious after the previous night's events. It seemed a night's sleep and a few hours of thought was all he needed to be back to his old self. Well, Issei, allow me to be the first to welcome you to the clubhouse of the Occult Research Club. I have no doubt you understand this is a front after the things that happened last night, correct? Rias began, getting an eager nod from Issei. Yeah, um, that was something I guess, the boy said, his mood returning to a more solemn demeanor like earlier that morning. I believe a full explanation is needed, so I guess the best point to start with is the supernatural world that humanity sees in myths from around the world is true. Practically all of it, in fact, though some things were a bit twisted in translation, Rias took on a lecturing voice like a teacher. I remember last night, when she sprouted those wings. You called her a fallen angel. Then Naruto. You sprouted wings and tails and big ears too. Issei said while jabbing his finger Naruto's way, getting a deadpan look in return. Yes, Issei, Rias grabbed his attention once more. See, there are three major factions that have power over most of the world. The angels, fallen angels like the one that attacked you last night, and the final of the big three, devils, which is what we are. With that, Rias and the others all sprouted their wings to show off to the newcomer. Issei, while shocked, wasn't totally speechless after recalling the events of last night. Sure, things were weird, and a big part of him wanted to think maybe it was all just a crazy dream but a part of him, the slightly more serious part he only used when he really had to, could tell that this wasn't just his mind playing a trick on him. Okay, okay, 
so you were all devils. I was almost killed by a fallen angel. All right, what were those tales and things though? Issei asked. Rias raised an eyebrow as she glanced at Naruto, who sighed before he stood fully and stepped beside her. First, Issei, let me tell you that there are a huge amount of beings around this world beyond what I've already told you about. That, and there is some overlap. You see, a long time ago, a massive war nearly wiped out all life on Earth, including humanity, angels, fallen, and devils. While humans could bounce back easily as your race has a very high rate of birth compared to practically every other sentient species, others like us devils are not so lucky. So after the war, a new method of creating more devils was invented by one of our leaders. The peerage or evil peace system. Not the most appealing of names, but what it can do is amazing and save my people from extinction. More on that later. All you need to know at this moment is that this system allows non-devils to become devils through a short ritual. Naruto and everyone here but me have been made devils with this system. Rias explained as Naruto sprouted his tails and ears. Issei took a seat as his absorbed the information that he was being fed. A whole other world hidden from human eyes was opening up to him, and it was understandably a lot for an average teen to take in. His mind stopped at that, an average teen. Why would any of these people bother with someone like him? As his mind narrowed onto the thought, he looked back up to the expectant faces of the devils gathered around him. Why? What? Rias asked, a bit confused by his word choice. Why? Why me? Why did Yuma, or whatever her name was, try and kill me? Why did you save me? Why tell me about all of this? Issei asked, growing mildly suspicious of their goal. Naruto and the other's eyes widened at Issei's outburst. They had seemingly underestimated the boy. It was clear he was at least smart enough to gather the oddness of his own situation when seeing most humans were left blissfully unaware of the real world. It's because you have something, Naruto replied bluntly, eliciting a mild frown from Rias for how he answered. What he means, she said, holding a hand up to stop more questions from Issei, is that you are a special type of human, one born with something called a sacred gear. There are some humans born with gifts that help to level the playing field, as it were. Humans with these gifts are sought out by every group of supernatural beings for one reason or another. You saw last night the fallen wanted to kill you, which is strange for its own reasons, as usually a sacred gear user is recruited by a faction to try and bring their abilities to bear on that faction's enemies. That is actually part of the reason you are here now. Rhea stepped closer to Issei until she was standing beside him. Whatever your sacred gear is, Issei, it is beginning to awaken. Some awaken at birth others in puberty or from traumatic events, and some never do. What matters is that now that it has begun awakening, it will alert supernatural beings to your presence, and you will essentially be hunted for the rest of your life, she said. Rias had a slightly apologetic look on her face, but over her lifetime, seeing the troubles of both her friends and herself, she knew no life came without its burdens, and the best one could do was embrace that fact and try to make the best of their situation. Issei looked as though he had been slapped as the reality of his situation began to set in. Whatever it was that made him a target seemed like it would only get worse with time, and he had no way of even knowing what was causing it. He was scared. If it hadn't been for Naruto, he would already be dead. He couldn't stop something like that from happening again. Hell, as far as he knew, he was brought here just so these devils could kill him and take his power themselves. Why did you bring me here? Issei asked quietly now eyeing Rias with a healthy amount of apprehension. This wasn't missed by the peerage who primarily felt bad for the boy. Each of them had experienced being trapped and isolated before. It was part of what allowed them to connect so well with one another. A shared pain. It's simple, Issei. I had you brought here to join our family, Rias explained with her usual warm smile. After blinking for a few moments, Issei cleaned out his ears in a comical fashion before asking Rias to repeat herself in a very polite tone. Chuckling, Rias obliged the boy's request, but was nearly bowled over by his reaction. What? He shouted, causing the rest of the group to grimace with their far more sensitive hearing, particularly Naruto and Kaneko. Just as I said, I want you to join us. Remember when I mentioned the evil pieces earlier? I want you to become a devil. It is probably the best deal you will get too. We will help protect you and even teach you to use whatever your sacred gear is, and you will support us by being a part of my peerage, Rias said, laying the sales pitch out. Wait. So I would become a devil, just like that? Issei asked. Naruto sighed and was ready to move on. He understood the boy's confusion, but if he got one thing it was people, and explaining everything to Issei in one sitting wasn't going to stick with him. You know, I figured you would jump at this, Hayadu. I mean, 
All the strongest devils have harems of beautiful women. Hell, with the evil pieces, most of them collect various supernatural women too to get that exotic flavor, he said with a voice seeming to not care whether the boy chose to join them or not, which was partially true. He wasn't ecstatic about Hayudu joining their group, but if his sacred gear was draconic, it was bound to be powerful, and Rias could use all the help she could get for her problem. Really? Issei shouted in excitement, causing Rias' eyes to twitch slightly. Technically, yes, be you. She began only to be interrupted. Well, sign me right the hell up then. What do I have to do for this ritual? Sacrifice a virgin? Kick a puppy? What? He asked with a fire in his eyes. The group was a little put off by his response, except Akino who was giggling demurely behind her hand. Nothing like that, just lay down here, and we will try to find the piece that fits you best, Ria said with a sigh, partially regretting this already. She already had to put up with Naruto, Akino, and to a lesser extent Kaneko when they felt mischievous, but she could tell this boy would be an entirely different experience. Laying on the open couch, Issei prepared for some sort of painful experience. Instead, he watched as Rias initially placed a pawn on his chest before widening her eyes in surprise, as it only faintly glowed at her before placing a second and then, after another moment, a third pawn. Chess pawns? Issei asked in confusion, only to be gently shushed by the redhead. Don't worry, the differences in the pieces will be better explained later. She then held her hand above the pieces and with a bright flash of red, the boy let out a startled yelp before he passed out. That's that then. Another new piece. Congrats, Rias. Naruto said with a small smile. Hmm. Yes, to be honest, his sacred gear must be very powerful, because I don't think he gained any more than the smallest of magical reserves. Really, it's kind of pitiful. Though I think it's worth mentioning if you hadn't saved him last night. Naruto, it probably would have taken almost twice as many pieces to revive him. That and the training we have all been doing made it a lot easier to fill the gap with my own power rather than more pieces, Rias commented while observing the sleeping boy. She really was curious now just what his sacred gear could be. She expected a single pawn to be enough with all the work she had been putting in in training, along with Issei being a fully willing recipient. After a brief meeting to catch up on the day with one another, and Naruto mentioning the odd behavior of Aika, the group broke apart and went their separate ways once more. Akino took Issei home again with a note from Rias pinned to his shirt, so he could get back in touch with them. Rias herself was back to doing paperwork for incorporating a new member into her peerage. Kiba set out for yet another overly touchy contract, and Kaneko left to spend some time playing games with Gasper. Naruto though had to get back to watching Aika, and so set out to stalk the girl as she seemed to go about her business as normal. The next day, things had gone relatively well, and even with the addition of Issei, who was proving to be a mixed blessing and curse for the peerage, nothing seemed out of the ordinary. Except for one glaring issue. Aika Kiryu seemed to be out sick. That coupled with the fact that they knew she was a witch and that she seemed to be acting oddly the day before, set off alarms in each of the peerage members' heads. After discussing things with Rias and Akino, as the Queen and Rook had slowly formed into sort of advisors for Rias on account of their superior world experience compared to the more reclusive members of the peerage, it was decided Naruto would leave school early and track the girl down, though Rias expressly forbade him from interacting directly with the girl. Less than three hours later, and he had already failed to follow her orders as he was stepping out of his hiding place directly in front of the distracted Aika. Naruto would, of course, argue he had a good reason, and he truthfully did. Aika was so distracted by that reason, she didn't even notice him until he was practically standing right over her. On her wrist and face were a set of darkening bruises that she seemed to be slowly healing with a faint pinkish glow emanating from a small wand in her hand. Naruto could recognize the pattern easily enough. As much as Sakura had liked to put up a front of a perfect family life, she had, on occasion, failed to hide similar bruises while on Team 7. Naruto had been gifted enough similar bruises by a Kanoha shopkeeper throwing him out, or an overzealous orphanage worker himself. Aika, Naruto called out softly, startling the girl, causing the wand to disappear up her sleeve and her face to turn away to try and better conceal the bruising she had. Oh, oh my, Naruto, what a surprise. What are you doing here, handsome? Come to finally give in to my offers, hm? She rattled on with a false quirky joy. It was a nearly perfect facade too. Had he not already seen her injuries, he might have actually bought it. You're hurt. Nice try distracting me, Naruto said with a soft though serious voice. What this? Nah? Puffed. You know I was just trying something new out and it got a little out of hand. Though maybe I'd give it another go if it was you and me. What do you say? Should I pencil you in? She asked in a faux-sultry voice, 
though Naruto could sense the faint sadness in her voice. Aika, nice try, he said again as he took a seat next to her. The girl looked at him for a second before her smile became less flirty and more sardonic. Huh, most guys lose it when I start saying things like that. Tell a teenage boy I have an older, rougher lover, and he is either too stuck on fantasizing the situation or too put off by how easy I am, she said with a surprisingly honest laugh. You have a messed up sense of humor. Was all of this just to keep people away from your problems? So they don't know you, he asked. Aika stared at him for a moment, thinking on his question. Really she didn't see why she should even tell him. It wasn't much of his business, but he was sweet for stopping to check on her seeing her bruises. Really Naruto, I'm not some basket case. I can tell you, that the whole bit about checking out the boys and girls at school, and taking underwear, and being able to tell your size with just a glance, impressive by the way, that's all really me. Maybe just not today. It's kind of you to check on me, even when we don't really know one another, but I'm fine. I can take care of myself, alright? Aika's smile had become completely honest in the last couple of moments though it was nowhere as bright or seductive as she normally sported. She seemed almost cute at the moment, probably because she wasn't grabbing his crotch in front of their schoolmates. For Naruto, the last two days had shown him a bit of a new side of two of the most perverted people he knew. Similarly to himself when he still lived in Kanoha, it seemed they amped an aspect of their personality to act as a mask in public. Issei was brighter and more open-minded than he expected of him, and Aika was far different. She was all over the place to him, though he could tell a lot of it was from her own mask to keep him guessing on her actual personality. Well, if you say so. Still, at least take this. I think you will know what it is, Naruto said, handing her a summoning contract, causing her eyes to widen and her body to tense. I thought so. Use it if you get in over your head, alright? Nothing wrong with asking for help. With that, he stood and waved to her as he started walking home taking the longer path to try and clear his mind of the situation concerning the young witch from his school. He was deeply bothered by the idea of someone abusing another person, especially when Aika was such an open and friendly, if handsy, girl. His mind was so focused on the witch and what her coven might be doing in the area, and what Rias would do to him when she found out he had spilled the beans about himself to the second-year girl, that he didn't see the person in front of him till he bounced off his chest and clattered to the ground in a heap. Oh we. A meek voice called out, glancing down at the girl that had run into him. Naruto blushed slightly at the revealing position she was in before helping her up. Sorry, my mind was elsewhere. Are you all right? He asked. He grimaced faintly a second later when he realized who, or more precisely what exactly it was that had run into him. Oh, you speak Italian. Wonderful. I have been having such a hard time trying to find someone to help me find my way around. I only know a little Japanese the blonde nun said with a pure smile shining his way, just as brightly as the evening sun gleaming off the crucifix around her neck. Oh, hi yeah, just half Japanese as you can see, Naruto said, pointing at himself to show his own blonde hair and blue eyes. I see. Sorry for running into you. I'm just so turned around here and wasn't paying attention, she said with a small frown as she looked around the area. Maybe I can help. Oh, that would be lovely. Let's see. I'm trying to find this church here in Kuo. Do you know where it is? She asked. Naruto glanced at the poorly written sticky note with the church's name on it. He knew the one. All right, but he was pretty sure it had been abandoned for a decent amount of time, as Kuo was solidly under devil rule after the region was purchased from the yokai and Shinto pantheon roughly a decade back. With the change to one of the big three running the territory, the elder priest running the church had returned to his home somewhere in Tokyo and left the region to the Grimmery and Citri clans. Yeah, I know the one but it's on the other side of the city from here and it's getting late. Plus, I think it's been abandoned for years. Let me take you to my place for the night so you can rest and I will try to take you there tomorrow. Sound good, he offered and was met with a bright smile from the girl in return. You are a very kind person, thank you, she said. Her eyes then opened again and she looked surprised. Oh, I haven't introduced myself. My name is Asia Argento. Ah well, nice to meet you too, Asia. I'm Naruto Uzumaki. Let's get underway. I'll pick up some food from the restaurant next door, and you can use my room while I use my futon in the living room, he chuckled as she seemed to feel she was imposing, but soon the pair were chatting amicably. What a sweet girl. She is practically the poster girl for a nun. She's so pure and innocent. There is no way I could have left her alone on the street. That being said, Rias must never know about this. She will already be annoyed with pretty much telling Aika I was a devil. This will just get her to let Akino keep as a chew toy for a month he shivered at that thought. As the night wore on, 
Like he had mentioned earlier, Naruto allowed Asia to use his bedroom while he used his futon in the living room. Just as he was getting comfortable, however, he sat straight up with an ear-splitting scream coming from his bedroom. Jumping to his feet, Naruto raced toward the room to help his guest against whoever felt they could attack her in his house. Naruto flew down the short hall to his bedroom in record time, even for himself, and practically slammed the door open, ready to open up his own special brand of whoop-ass on whoever thought they could simply come into his house and start something. Then, once the door was open and he was standing there with the other two occupants, he found the mix of angry sneer and wicked smile slide off his face immediately. In the boys' room, an odd collection of people now stood. The owner of the apartment, and last to the room, stood clad in Dragon Ball print pajama bottoms and nothing else. Before him, a frighteningly familiar redhead clad in similarly printed pajamas resembled a cat with her hackles raised as she stared wide-eyed at the third and final occupant, who was none other than a petite blonde girl with the most innocent and confused look on her face. Oh, of course she comes over to sleep tonight of all nights. Naruto briefly grumbled while ignoring the deep chuckles from his tenant in the back of his mind. It's okay, sister, calm down, Naruto said as he relaxed from his stance. Beside him, Ria's eyes bulged before seeming to take in the girl's appearance and then flicking back to Naruto. Sister? Her mind roared. Why don't you lay back down and Ria's and I can go talk in the other room? Naruto said though it seemed Asia was still a little too keyed up from having a stranger trying to climb into bed with them to attempt that. Naruto, why didn't you tell me you had a sister? A quiet voice interrupted him as he reached out to comfort the girl, bringing him up short with an equally confused face to Asia's. That lasted all of five seconds before Naruto realized that Asia did, in fact, look as though she could be his sister. That and he was now cursing himself for devil-enhanced puberty. As for the first time since initially meeting her, Naruto took a good look at the nun. Seriously, why did a nun own a nightgown that was pretty much see-through? Not to mention, Rhea's clothes were always snug, but her nightclothes, if she deigned to actually wear any, were practically just another layer of skin. I don't think I can deal with this crap tonight. Maybe I can avoid telling her she's a nun, though, Naruto thought, continuing to ignore the growing laughter in the back of his mind. You never told me you had a sister, Rhea said this time her voice sounding very hurt at something so major being kept from her by one of her closest people, someone who she had shared literally everything with for the last couple of years. Damn it. Rias, she isn't my sister. She's a nun, he said, his voice quieting toward the end. Oh, she's a nun, Rias said with surprise and a hint of relief he hadn't kept his family from her for some reason. Well, that went better than expected. The QB growled through Naruto's mind. Disappointed Rias wasn't going to rake his jailer over the coals for this. Wait for it, Naruto replied. Oh, she's a nun. Huh? Rias asked with some venom in her voice. There it is, Naruto sighed while his tenant howled with glee that Naruto was in the doghouse with his king. Yeah, Rias, she is a nun. Can we go talk about this in the other room? Asia needs some rest. Just rest, Asia. I'll explain in the morning. Naruto tugged gently at Rias and led her out of the room as the girl tried to fight back a yawn but lost the battle and returned to bed. Between traveling and being lost in Kuo all day, the poor girl was still exhausted. Once back in the living room, Rias yanked her wrist out of her rook's grip and settled the mother of all glares on him, stirring up feelings of terror and other more confusing teenage things. Wanna explain yourself, Naruto? Rias hissed through her gritted teeth, throwing up a couple of silencing barriers around them. He sat on the couch, and Rias lowered herself into the chair, never breaking the glare that was surely starting to burn into her naughty subordinate. I just want to start off by saying, I know you don't like that she is here, but I couldn't just leave her in the street, Naruto said. Why the hell not? Rias, the girl was starving and about to drop. She was so exhausted. Not to mention, Kuo may mostly be peaceful but you and I both know the outskirts she needs to go through has abnormally high rates of crime, especially against women. Naruto pointed out. Her glare dropped to a much lighter scowl, and her eyes softened as she would have hated having something like that on her conscience if someone had taken advantage of a girl just because she didn't want to deal with someone from another faction. Still, the fact Naruto was just going to hide it from her pissed her off, and honestly, hurt a bit. Why didn't you tell me? She asked, far more calm and no longer ready to get into a screaming match. I thought that would be obvious. Myself and the others are supposed to keep you safe. If word gets out that you had any interaction with members of the church, it hurts your appearance in the underworld. I think the term is plausible deniability, or something like that, Naruto said matter-of-factly. Oh, so it was to protect me? 
Rias asked with a bit of heat in her voice. Well, yeah. I'm not some damsel, idiot. I'm your king. You have to tell me about this sort of thing. First thing in the morning, she is gone. And that's that. Next time you want to do something stupid, ask me first so I can just knock some sense into you. Now come on, Rias said in motion toward the futon as she went to lay down. She stopped when she noticed he was staring at her with a dumbfounded look on his face. I know you aren't a damsel, but me and the others are here to protect you, remember? That's the whole purpose of us being in your peerage, right? Not to mention, that girl could barely function when someone was climbing into bed with her. She was so tired. I will escort her to the church on the outskirts after school tomorrow, Naruto replied, causing Rias to snap into a straight, standing position in shock. Naruto might be a bit of a wild card, or even a bit hard to manage, but he was never directly insubordinate with her. He had killed at her command before, and he was hung up on the thought of kicking a nun to the curb in the morning? What the hell are you saying right now? Rias hissed, once more getting pissed. The pair were in for a long night. A combination of conflicting morals and stress from a myriad of things keeping the fight going until Rias left to sleep at her own apartment. Something she hated as she always disliked sleeping alone. At school the next day things were not much better. Outside the club, the students could tell there was some sort of tension in the group. Sadly for Issei, most pinned the blame on its newcomer, and he had to deal with mobs of agitated classmates all day for daring to disrupt the great lady or the school mascot. Racy rumors about Issei interfering with a possible romance between Naruto and Rias had also begun to spread which didn't help his case either. For the club itself, things were far worse. Naruto and Rias practically remained on the same page at all times, even when teasing or annoying one another. Now though, the peerage members, especially Issei, were thrown for a loop by their behavior. Both Naruto and Rias were very emotional people. While they could be calculating or even cold at times, they were at their core beings of passion, as were most devils. Their personalities simply amplified that fact, leading, of course, to Naruto and Rias all but screaming at one another in front of the rest of the peerage. Furthermore, the two of them were far too similar in tactics, as in both were underhanded in their fights. That included arguments, both saying things just to embarrass or hurt the other in their anger. In the end, with a huff and a fierce scowl, Naruto left school following the lunch period, deciding that Asia had likely rested enough and he could escort her now. The majority of the occult research club also dispersed, returning for afternoon classes. However, Akino and Rias remained, both standing at Rias' favorite window to watch the school grounds from. He's a stubborn brat, Rias grumbled while staring at Naruto's fading back. The boy had chosen to walk so as to try and cool off his mood before he picked up Asia. Definitely, but I like him as he is. Don't you? Akino asked before giggling slightly as she saw Rias try to remain angry at Naruto. Sadly for her, she was arguably the most soft-hearted high-class devil there was, and there was little she could do to stop the fond smile that spread onto her face at the thought of her peerage, and her rook particularly. Maybe. He's still a stubborn idiot, though, Rias said with an exaggerated huff, causing Akino to giggle once again. It hadn't been long after returning home that Naruto and Asia began the trek toward the church on the outskirts of town. Thankfully, Asia hadn't asked about the night before except to apologize if she caused any kind of issue between Naruto and his lover, which sent the poor boy into a blushing and stammering fit to try and dissuade her of such a notion. The pair had taken the trip slowly Naruto showing her a couple of sights and just enjoying the innocent nature of his new, if brief, friendship. Having missed his lunch to fight with Rias, and Asia having not had breakfast or lunch in favor of catching up on her sleep. Naruto took the girl out to eat at a small noodle place along the way. It wasn't Ichiraku, but it did in a pinch and filled the pair up. Winding down with their time spent together, Naruto regretted having to part ways with the girl. She was the purest person he had met in his life, similar to Hinata from back in Kanoha. That line of thought caused him to frown slightly and try to focus on finishing his time with Asia on a positive note. Unluckily, or luckily, Based on perspective, Naruto felt the sudden pull from one of his contracts as they left the noodle stand. Few realize that the feelings and desires of those who use the contracts can be felt by the devil in question, once they are in tune enough with their magic. While it was a rare skill outside of high class, it most definitely wasn't unheard of in mid-class devils. It helped to avoid ambushes after all, if you knew what the person calling out to you desired already. Rias is gonna be even more pissed now, Naruto moaned mentally before frowning slightly. Asia, I'm sorry, I can't take you to the church right now. I promise I will take you there in person, but for now, go with these two back to my house. I'll explain later. 
Naruto wanted, of course, to be able to see her off in person and not with a clone. Asia was just stunned by the sudden existence of multiple Narutos. Watching Asia and his doppelgangers leave, Naruto immediately teleported to his contract, only for someone to yank him down behind what appears to be a ruined sofa with yellow patches that he hopes are something other than what his mind thinks they are. That was fast. The grabber says as the owner of the voice lets their hands wander. Hello to you too, Aika. What's wrong? Naruto asked as the girl's hands slowly left him, and she faced him more seriously than even the day before when speaking of her bruises. I don't know what else to do. I know this area is a devil's territory, but beyond that, I don't know how this works. How do I make a contract with you? She said. The girl's voice had kicked up a couple of octaves, and she seemed to peek over the ruined couch into the rest of the alley as if expecting someone to have followed her. First, just take a breath and tell me what's going on. As for the contract thing, just using that to summon me pretty much started the process. Think less of signing away your soul and more your taxi cab meter is running, and the value goes up with your request, but a base requirement is needed for just summoning me at all. Naruto commented far too nonchalant for Aika's tastes as she blinked oolishly for a moment before shaking her head and slapping her cheeks to clear her mind. Putting aside all the things I want you to do or all the things I could do to pay for it, she began, gaining a tired sigh from the blonde. I summoned you to warn you. I know you know I'm a witch. My coven leader has lost it, though. She hasn't just gone off reservation. She has emigrated nations away from reasonable at this point. The clothes are all following along too. You have to actually tell me what is going on, Aika. They're trying to create a new summoning creature. A monster. They have to do a ritual to bring it to life though and it requires human sacrifice, she said again, peering around looking for her coven mates. Crap, what is with this town? Naruto asked aloud. What do you mean? Ah, Kuo used to be a yokai hub, then for a while, it was a sort of joint community for the church and the yokai that allowed them to have a neutral area in Japan to meet. Then the church left, and the Mao leased it from the yokai, and within the last couple of months, there has been a surge of stray devils, a random coven of witches, a band of fallen, and evidently the church is looking into the area again, he said with an exasperated sigh. Oh wow, I get it. Kinda off topic though, Aika said as her mood went back to being stressed by her former coven's actions. Right, right. So you said they had to do a human sacrifice and ritual and everything. Where? Also, what exactly does it all entail? Like is there a magic crystal I can break and disrupt this crap, or maybe some big cauldron I can tip over? He asked, getting a flat stare in response. You realize we aren't cartoon characters, right? She asked him with an annoyed tone. There is totally a cauldron I can tip over, or something to ruin this plan, isn't there? He asked with a cheeky grin. Aika was silent for a while before she let out a sigh. You are very lucky you are cute, you know that right? Otherwise, you would just be an annoying first-year brat, she growled out. There is a brazier in the center of the room. The sacrifices will be around it in one in each cardinal direction. Then I guess that's pretty much it. I obviously wasn't invited to participate after I tried to stop them from slitting our classmates' throats on the first attempt earlier today. Wait, what the heck? How are you just telling me that it's our classmates and that they already tried once before only now? No, you know what? We have spent way too much time here, Naruto said before he stood up. Rias is gonna be like triple pissed off at me today. I want you to know that you were like at least responsible for a third of that. Naruto growled down at Aika making her confused before she felt his energy spike. And the alley soon filled with red light as several others joined them. I can explain, Aika heard Naruto say before he seemed to grunt as a hand shot out. And popped the back of his head. Oh, you will be doing a lot of that later, Rias said as she looked down at Aika, who blinked back in a faux innocent manner. Get up Kiryu, Rias sighed out. Really? This whole living on earth thing was turning to crap. I know you know who I am. Aika froze briefly before standing and laughing awkwardly. This week had been getting weirder and weirder. Now, with finding out that the devil boss of this territory was Rias Grimmery, Aika was mentally kicking herself. It was completely obvious in retrospect. The leader of her coven had told her that Naruto was just the servant of whatever devil held the territory, and that the boss was the younger sister of the current Lucifer himself. She just hadn't known Lucifer's name beyond his title. Naruto hung out with Rias and her group enough that she should have made the connection, though. Grimmery, Aika mumbled, causing the already annoyed Rias to roll her eyes. Sorry, I just, Aika started only to get a look from the gathered devils. Right, well, when the coven found out you were looking into me, they sort of sped up their game. Rather than wait a few months and groom the perfect sacrifices, they just grabbed some of our classmates. 
The end result won't be that big of a difference, I guess. They just needed virgin sacrifices. Oh, so witches are the ones that sacrifice virgins, Issei commented, getting the rest of the group to look at him. The boy blushed and waved for them to continue. Who did they take? Naruto asked. For second years. Two boys and two girls. One for each of the cardinal directions, she said. A few hours earlier, Matsudo Ishino and Motohama Yashiro were running for their lives. Over the last few days, the third member of the trio had gone AWOL, and so the two boys had subconsciously pushed to make up for their group's diminished quota of perverted acts. Adversely, the fact that their third member had somehow magically become one of the in people with the popular students at school, Matsuda and Motohama had also begun to suffer far worse punishments from their natural predators, the Kendo Club. Keite Soga and Murayama Akiyama were the acting presidents of the girls' kendo club of Kuo Academy. The two of them were relatively well-liked students and, to most, were friendly and kind. However, above all things, they had a problem with perverts and a love for the occult research club clique. Over the last couple of days, they had noticed not only that Issei Hayudu, the effective leader of the perverted trio, had wormed his way within the ORC, but he also seemed to be causing issues with it as well. No one had ever seen Naruto and Rias act so angry with one another before, and so the girls could only conclude Issei had done something. For the most part, the girls had kept their anger at the situation either contained or directed at who they felt was the proper party to blame. Issei alone. Unfortunately for the two boys tangentially connected to the main object of their ire, they were once more caught peeking on the kendo club while its members changed after practice. They also did a better job than usual too managing to catch the club while most were clad in nothing or only towels, all except Keites and Murayama. So, Matsuda and Motohama were running for their lives as two very angry and frustrated girls gave chase. The boys had initially hoped leaving school grounds would cause them to give up the chase, but had no such luck. Instead, Keites and Murayama were beginning to show their superior physical fitness as they gained on the boys while racing through Kuo. It had felt like they had been running forever. But just as the boys were about to surrender and accept their beatings, something interrupted. Or rather, someone. A gorgeous foreign woman seemed to appear out of nowhere. She was a dark-skinned foreign woman with pale hair and enchanting yellowish eyes, clad in arguably the tightest business suit boys had seen. Oh, excuse me, I seem to have gotten in your way, she said with poor Japanese. Not that either boy noticed. Milf, Motohama mumbled only to receive a pop on the head from his friend who tried to play the whole thing off in front of the beauty. For her part, the woman only giggled demurely behind her hand as the two girls caught up to the group. Similarly to the two boys, Keites and Murayama were entranced by the pleasant woman. Her beauty was obvious, but the way she carried herself seemed to say she was of a higher class than the students themselves. Well, you four really are a perfect gift for the day. You have no idea how much I was stressing out before bumping into all of you she said with a bright smile, causing the students to instinctively smile back. Would you all lend me a hand with something? She asked sweetly, getting a round of nods from the group as their eyes slowly grew more and more glossed over. Wonderful. Just this way, please, she said while guiding them gently toward an unnaturally dark alleyway. As the teens grew nearer and nearer to the alley, the woman stopped for a brief moment in surprise. One of the boys, the one with glasses, seemed to hesitate for a slight moment forcing her to apply more power into her spell over him. It seemed he was special, if only marginally so. What a waste. Sadly, things were already in motion, and these four poor souls would have to do in the time crunch she and her sisters found themselves in. Present. If Rias had been angry before, now she was furious. The fact that a witch coven was within her territory without permission was bad enough. That they had kidnapped humans residing, unknowingly or not, within her lands was a slap to the face. The fact that it was her schoolmates made it personal. Naruto was simply happy Rias now had someone else to be angry at. Maybe it would be good to vent all that frustration on these witches. Plus, Rias liked being a hero and saving classmates from being sacrificed for some ritual would definitely put her in a good mood. The peerage took a moment to prepare themselves as they approached the dilapidated warehouse Ika said held her coven and their victims. The group checked what few items of equipment they possessed. Kiba summoned a sword. Kaneko slipped on some gloves. Naruto tightened his kanai and shuriken pouches down. All the while Issei stood awkwardly, glancing between the intense and determined devils around him. Are these witches going to be a really tough fight? He asked with some nervousness in his voice. Hopefully not. But it's best to be prepared, Rias said. Ika said there is only three witches, 
usually a witch is weaker than devils and only have a couple direct spells like small fireballs or something. The real trouble you have to watch out for are hexes though, Naruto said. Hexes? Issei asked. Yeah, they're real bad, Kaneko said with a glimmer of something in her eye. Kaneko is right. Some hexes are terrible. Like one that can turn its target impotent, Akino said, sharing the glimmer in Kaneko's eyes. Oh, don't get me started on the things they can do. I heard that some poor new pawn in one of the Bale peerages was hexed to only ever attract extremely muscular and hairy men. All women were repulsed by him, Naruto added after catching on. Bullcrap, Issei argued. No, Naruto is right. I have been trying to learn a hex that shrinks a man's junk to micro-size to distract them in battle. It's one of my teacher's favorite attacks, Ika said. Maybe we should think about this some more before just rushing in, Issei said as he began to sweat. What about Matsuda and Motohama? Imagine what horrible things are being done to them the longer we take, Naruto asked. Issei gripped his face in his hands and let out a low moan of anguish, getting small cheeky smiles throughout the group. Finally, his head raised though, and determination flared to life in his eyes. You're right. My buddies are relying on me. We have to save them from such terrible things, and if it's too late for them not to be hexed by one of those terrible attacks, then I will avenge them myself. He declared finally breaking the dam as the others burst into laughter at his heroic stance. All right, that's enough, Rhea said with a smirk as she reigned in her group. Same as usual, Kaneko breached the door. Naruto and Kiba are first in. I want you to stay by Aika and help her however you can, Issei. Akino, you and Kaneko will stick together, and I'll follow behind Naruto and Kiba. She ordered. The group nodded then after a silent countdown. Rias nodded to the white-haired girl. Drawing her fist back, Kaneko slammed her hand into the center of the double doors, blowing both back and hanging off their hinges. Naruto and Kiba wasted no time, sprinting past Kaneko and into the dim room, freezing once they reached their positions. As the others came in behind them, they too froze. They were too late. The bloodied corpses of four classmates lay strapped down to makeshift platforms around a large creature. The monster was easily larger than the whole of Rhea's peerage combined. An odd combination of a giant bat, a squid, and what looked to be an elephant. It was horrendous, but that still was nothing compared to the soulless hollow eyes that locked onto them. You treacherous little bitch. Did you think we didn't know you and your devil friends were coming, Aika? The dark-skinned woman said with a snide tone. It doesn't matter if you knew we were coming. You're intruding on my territory. You've harmed my charges. You will get no mercy in return for such actions, Rias said with a scowl. Any humor from teasing Issei earlier was long gone. Instead, her anger from earlier in the day had returned a hundredfold at the sight of her dead classmates. Oh dear, the little princess is angry, girls. What a frightful sight. A second witch commented. Unlike the first, her skin was nearly paper white and flawless, and rather than the pale colored hair and eyes, her hair was a deep raven black. Just like the first witch though, she was unnaturally beautiful and carried herself in a definite grace. Let's just get this over with. The beast will need to kill another peerage after this one before we can set up framing those fallen angels after all, the final witch commented. Just like the first, the witch was a beauty. Her golden tan skin and golden blonde hair made her seem like the stereotypical supermodel from America, though her bored expression marred her attractive features. You're right. Beast, kill them and eat the corpses. I don't want too much of a mess left, the first said casually. With that, the monster launched itself at the nearest two targets. Naruto and Kiba met the beast's charge with one of their own, and the battle commenced. While Naruto and Kiba danced around the much larger creature looking for opportunities to cut it with their swords or knives, the others engaged the witches themselves. Issei, lacking any kind of training, could do little but dive behind something to avoid being roasted by a pair of emerald green fireballs. Thankfully, the witch attacking him, the blonde woman, was soon distracted as Akino and Kaneko began double-teaming her. Their mix of ranged and close-quarters attacks kept the witch off-balance and unable to get a properly powerful spell off to fight back. Rias shocked her enemies with the speed, she got a blast of her power of destruction off. The surprisingly fast-moving attack slammed into the dark-haired witch, flinging her away from the battle but not fully killing her. With the dark-haired woman seemingly out for the fight, Rias and Aika worked together to battle the leader of the coven. You'll pay for that, you red-haired bitch, she shouted, unleashing a blast of pure magical energy and nearly hitting Rias. Rias pushed her shock at such an attack to the back of her mind, 
few witches or mages could focus pure magic to such a concentrated level like that blast. Ika, close by, let loose an attack of her own. A very small, though fast-moving ball of flame. Sadly, Ika had only recently begun learning magic, and the witch batted the flame away with a scoff. Why I ever thought you would be a worthwhile student is beyond me, Ika, she said before completely ignoring her in favor of attacking Rias with a massive gout of flame that lit the room in an eerie green glow. Don't worry though, I hate to waste things, so you will make an excellent thrall for the coven. On the other side of the room, the silent beast and two boys fighting it continued their battle. It was a stalemate. While Naruto could likely get in and kill it if given the chance, he simply couldn't keep up. Despite being one of the fastest rooks to exist, Naruto was still a rook and needed to train doubly hard for speed or magical abilities than he would for pure physical strength and durability. While he had landed several glancing blows, they barely seemed to be registered by the creature, and Kiba simply lacked the strength with his sword attacks to break the monster's tough skin. They needed a new strategy. Kiba, you need to switch with Akino or Rias. I need someone to tie it down just long enough to land a good blow on this damn thing. Naruto called out to his comrade. The knight hesitated briefly. It defied his natural tendencies to back off, but Naruto had proven himself in their spars to be plenty gifted with tactics when in a fight. Understood, he called back and zipped across the room towards Akino's position. Once there, Kiba realized things were not going as planned with this fight either. Where Kaneko and Akino had once had a single which pinned between their attacks, now they faced the blonde and recovered dark-haired woman. Both women were clearly gifted witches as well, the dark-haired woman having surprisingly healed most of the damage from Rhea's earlier blast. Her healing abilities gave her more offensive-based comrade all the breathing room she needed to turn the fight more into her favor. Something was wrong. These women weren't the typical witch coven. They had already shown to be far more skilled and experienced than should have been expected. Akino, Naruto needs a caster type to help him with the monster. Kiba said as he used his blade to deflect a lightning spell downward, scattering blasted concrete from the floor. Well, Yudo Kuen, maybe you could ask Rias. I'm sure you can see I'm slightly preoccupied, she said with a false sweet smile before letting a large blast of lightning arc toward her opponents. The bolt instead struck a metal beam that gave the two women some cover, heating the metal to a glowing red. Akino clicked her teeth in annoyance and released another massive blast of lightning causing the beam to sag as it melted from the heat coursing through it. Sadly, both women had already moved on to new cover. I see. Perhaps I can do something to help? Kiba asked as he danced around a set of icicles springing from the floor. President needs help too, Kaneko commented flatly. The girl had slight tears in her uniform, and her hair was disheveled. However, her condition didn't bother her nearly as badly as the fact that she couldn't get close enough to the witches to land a blow. We need some sort of opening here. Then we can help Rias. Naruto will just have to hold on for a while, Akino said with finality. The other two nodded and prepared to launch their attack. Kiba raced up the left side around several empty barrels and crates while Akino launched arcs of lightning overhead, allowing Kaneko to sprint across the shortest path directly between the two groups. It just wasn't enough. A blast of wind sent both Knight and Rook careening across the floor to land in a heap at Akino's feet. Just as the girl leaned down to help her younger friends, the blonde which seemed to appear before them with a hand blazing a sickening green color. You little children really don't know who you are dealing with, do you? She mocked, preparing the death blow. A wet thump dropped her to the ground. A quickly growing pool of blood from a gash on the back of her head hinted at what happened. Standing over her with a bloodied piece of broken concrete stood Issei with a terrified look on his face. Hesitating only briefly, the boy reared back and slammed the chunk of debris into the downed woman's head. He stared down at the clearly dead woman, then at his friends who shared a shocked look at his actions. I just, he stammered. You did good, Issei. Really, Akino quickly said as she and the others recollected themselves. They would need to help the boy through this later but, for now, they had another pair of witches to kill. You little shit. A sudden scream echoed through the room, causing all four to turn and look at the dark-haired woman sporting a grief-stricken face. I'll flay you alive for this, you mongrel. She hollered before her hands seemed to sparkle and the woman cast her spell. Rather than hitting Issei though, it instead impacted Kaneko who had shoved the pawn out of the line of fire. A mix of wind and water magic flung the small girl across the room closer to Naruto's fight. No one to cover you now, which, Akino said with a growl before unleashing the largest blast of lightning, she had so far directly into the woman's chest, sending her into the wall. However, Akino didn't stop there. 
instead, pouring more and more lightning into the woman as she screamed until only her twitching and burnt corpse remained. With Rias and Ika, the fight had also bogged down into a contest of spells. Ika, sadly, simply wasn't powerful enough to keep up with the two elder girls. Her coven leader was older than even she could recall, kept young by vile rituals every few years, while Rias was a devil, a race simply gifted with more power and magic than humans naturally possessed. Rias burned away yet another of the woman's many fireballs with her power of destruction. While Rias was indeed more powerful than her enemy, a mix of the woman's greater experience, fluidity, and range of spells, as well as the fact Rias was having to also partially shield Ika from attack, was making it nearly impossible for her to go on the offensive. Her enemy, however, had no such restriction, and so she continued to hammer away at Rias with blasts of fire and other spells. She looked almost to be enjoying herself. The giggles coming from her confirmed that. You know, it has been centuries since I have gotten a chance to truly let all this pin-up magic out. It feels good. For that alone, I might let you watch as our new pet eats your friends rather than having you go first, she taunted as another set of flames singed Rias once immaculate uniform. You and your monster will be dead soon enough, so just shut up and fight, Rias replied, taking out the driver's side of a rusted-out car left in the warehouse. You devils are supposed to be able to banter. You must be a prude, the witch giggled. Rias was about to snark back at the woman before a scream brought both sides to a standstill. Turning to look back across the room, all three women's eyes widened in shock at the sight before them. The dead witch at Issei's feet, the reeling dark-haired woman, and the coming blast for the boy. Rias nearly shouted in worry when Kaneko was sent flying across the room, but the witch practically howled as she watched her dark-haired friend die at Akino's hands. I've changed my mind was all she said before mumbling a strange language and flicking her hand toward the two girls. Unlike Rias, who was worried for her rook, Aika hadn't truly taken her attention off of the woman. She knew firsthand how vindictive and terrible she was. It was almost on instinct that she stepped in front of the sudden hex sent at herself and Rias, taking the full brunt of the attack. Both Rias and the witch were shocked that Aika had done such a thing. They barely knew one another, yet Aika had taken an attack for her. A dangerous one if the discoloration of her skin and sudden cries and gasps of pain were any indication. Rias didn't lose a beat this time, though. Twisting, she blasted the woman back with a wall of power of destruction. While not overly powerful itself and unlikely to have killed her, the attack slammed into her like a truck and scoured her beautiful flesh, leaving nothing but scars and burning hair behind as she shrieked in pain. For Kaneko, things had gone equally poorly. Instead of slamming into the ground as she had hoped, she found herself wrapped in one of the tentacles of the monster summoned by the witches. The mucus running down it acted like acid, burning her skin, just as tiny spines all along its length cut into her. The girl was a rook, though, and with her durability and strength, she broke free, taking one of the creature's tentacles as a trophy before dropping in a heap. The acid and cuts had done far more damage to her than usual, and Kaneko whimpered slightly in pain. Naruto's eyes narrowed to slits immediately after seeing Kaneko collapse. His breathing grew labored, and his yokai features became apparent. Kyuubi's yokai damaged him less than it once did, but it still caused him agony to use, and only when emotionally distraught did he pull on its power. Now, he had the speed he needed to pin the beast all on his own. The fight from there was short. His fist plunged through the creature's chest with a repeated series of strikes like a jackhammer, rather than remove his hand. Naruto instead plunged his second fist in beside it and began tearing the monster in half. It flapped and writhed to try and break free, but now that he had a solid hold on it, Naruto wasn't letting go. With a final grunt of effort, the creature split in two from its chest. With the monster dead, Naruto released the power of his tenant and glanced at the burns that now ran across his skin from the power forced through his body. His limit to how much his body could handle seemed to diminish every time he used the power. Making his way over to Kaneko, Naruto was relieved that her injuries weren't terrible. A night of healing, and the burns and cuts would heal without scars. Covering the girl, whose clothes had burned away from the monster's acid, in his own uniform, he helped her to her feet before joining the others where Rias and Aika were closer to the center of the warehouse. What happened? Naruto asked, looking at Aika. Rias had leaned the girl up against a slab of concrete as her breathing became harsher and more labored. She was hit with one of the witch's hexes, Rias said sadly. Aika gurgled slightly, turning her eyes to Naruto, causing him to kneel down beside her. He could see the fear in them. More than that, 
He could see how certain she was of her death. Please, she whispered. What? Just tell me what I need to do to help you, Naruto said with resolve in his voice. It was his nature to help those in need. Despite everything, Aika was honestly a kind girl, and he wanted to assist her. Nothing can stop it. Just please revive them. I know she can. That's how devils work, Aika choked out. Don't worry about them. I planned on bringing them back to make up for failing them anyway. What do we need to do to help you? Rias asked. The hex causes everything to become painful. It gets worse over time. Breathing, crying, speaking. Everything hurts. The girl whimpered as tears ran down her face. To her, it felt as if something was cutting its way down her cheeks with a knife. Kill me. No, we just have, Naruto argued. Please, it hurts, she whimpered out. The group was silent for a moment as they stared at each other. Slowly, Rias led the others away from the two. They had somehow formed a bond in such a brief interaction, and while neither Naruto nor Aika considered the other close, here in a warehouse with one of them about to die, it didn't matter. Even the smallest comfort was welcome. Gently placing her into his arms, Naruto gave her a soft hug and carefully eased her into a better spot. Are you sure? Naruto asked. His reply was a jerky nod. I will make sure Rias revives you too, Aika. You'll be one of us then. Okay? Naruto said with a sad tone. The girl hummed in response, the pain of speaking more than she wanted at the moment. It was quick. Coating a kanai in chakra and pressing it up into her heart made sure it was as fast as he could manage at the moment. No doubt the pain was still excruciating, but he just hoped it was fast enough to give her some mercy. Joining the others while carrying Aika's body, Naruto looked grimmer than Issei had ever seen the younger boy. In fact, all of the peerage looked bloodied, bruised, and exhausted. He still couldn't shake the feeling of killing the witch earlier with that rock. He felt an odd mix of sickness and pleasure at his action, which confused him. You did a good job, Issei, Naruto said beside the boy, causing him to look over at him in disbelief. Really, you did. You saved members of your peerage and helped us win a really tough fight that we weren't ready for. You haven't even been trained to fight yet, and still you did what you could, the blonde affirmed. All I did was hide and hit that chick with a rock, Issei said with a frown. Sometimes that's what needs to be done, Naruto replied as he stepped over to Rias and laid Aika beside the other dead students. It was my responsibility to provide protection for not only these four but Aika too. She doesn't really have any friends or close bonds at school, but I think she will fit in perfectly with us, Rias said while nodding as if to agree with her own words. Pervert patrol, Kaneko said with a sigh. In a matter of days, their peerage had somehow adopted all four of Koa's well-known perverts into their family. She wasn't exactly happy. She didn't want them dead. Well, maybe the perverted trio could die. She didn't want Aika and the Kendo girls dead though. I'm sure it will be fun to tease our new members, Akino said with a small smile as she plucked bits of concrete from her hair. I wonder if I can teach Katasui and Murayama some things, Kiba said with a faint smile of his own. I won't have to keep all this stuff a secret from Motohama and Matsuda, Issei said with a relieved smile. It would be good to have his best friends as part of this weird, terrifying, and dangerous new world. Well, Rias, what's it gonna be? Naruto asked. The redhead waved her hand in the air and withdrew her remaining evil pieces. Carefully placing the appropriate pieces on each of the fallen students' chests, she ran through her incantation. With a flash of red, the five bodies seemed to heal before their eyes. Wounds and injuries faded away, and their chests began to rise and fall with breath once more. Excellent. We'll be able to welcome four new pawns into our family. One of the boys seems to have a sacred gear of some type. Not nearly as powerful as Issei's, though he does have a much larger magical reserve to compensate somewhat, Rias said as she began teleporting the students to the clubhouse. Naruto, I want you to use your transformation ability to go and collect clothes for each of them from their homes and tell their parents they are staying at friends' houses. We'll put a blanket spell over them to forget about not seeing them for a whole day later, Rias ordered before she, Kiba, Kaneko, and Issei disappeared to finish healing the non-life-threatening injuries on the new pawns. Naruto sighed deeply. This day had ended up being entirely too much. He created some disguised clones and teleported them to the new members' houses. Mondays suck, he grumbled to the only remaining peerage member as she finished burning away the corpses, and one silently screaming yet still living witch. I do believe it is Wednesday, Naruto, Akino said with a giggle as the once beautiful woman finally turned to ash before her. Yeah. Well then I hate. He began to joke back, only to freeze suddenly and his eyes glaze over. Crap, Asia. 
Naruto shouted as he began prepping another teleportation circle. Naruto, stop. Rias already told you to not have contact with that girl. I know you were just trying to help her, but you have to realize the problem you could start. It's not our issue to be involved in, Akino scolded him with a frown. By that logic, Akino, Rias shouldn't have become involved with any of us. I'm just some yokai. Same with Kaneko. Kiba is a cast-off from the church like Asia is. And do you want me to get started on you and Gasper? He asked. Naruto didn't wait for an answer before disappearing with his teleportation circle. Akino, left alone in a cavernous warehouse, the smell of burnt flesh and hair strong, sighed sadly. I know, but she just doesn't want you to dive in over your head, stupid boy, she sighed out. No matter how right you might be. With that, she too teleported, though she was off to see Rias and tell her what was happening. Naruto's apartment. Naruto appeared in what was supposed to be his apartment. Instead, he found half his roof gone and most of his belongings ruined. Asia, it was clear, was long gone. Friggin fine angels, Naruto cursed. Don't worry Asia, I'll save you. The mental image of Asia's terrified face as Rainair snatched her up was burnt into his mind thanks to his clones. And if I have to, I'll kill every last one of you damn crows. Thank you for watching. If you liked our video, please hit the like button, subscribe for updates, and follow our Twitter, info in description. Credits go to the story's author, with details below. Don't miss out on our other content, click on the suggested video for more stories and adventures. We appreciate your support, and look forward to seeing you in our next video.